Hi everyone, I hope all is well. Today I'm going to demonstrate for you how I make my crock pot salmon uh, potatoes and veggies. It's real simple, real easy. It'll take about four to four and a half hours to cook depending on what type of fish and how thick your fish is um, that you're making. Um, again, I'm going to do salmon today. I did not take off the back part of my salmon, just so you all know. I'm going to cook this on a high heat. I will give you all the exact time of how long it took once mine is completed. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I've already washed off my salmon. I'm going to go ahead and brush mine with a little olive oil, which I have here. And all I'm using is, you know, just the 100%, you know, just a regular generic olive oil. I'm going to rub that on my fish like that. And the only seasonings I'm going to use, and you don't need that much, and this is optional. You do not have to rub your uh, salmon down with any olive oil if you don't want. Or you can use butter if you'd like, which we are going to add butter to our, um, you know, to our crock pot. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix our spices. I'm going to use today my seafood spectacular i'm not going to use too much because we know fish soaks up seasoning really good and i'm just going to use my um spice and herb seasoning so i'm going to mix a little bit of that maybe a little more we, we're not going to use all of that um, let me put some of that back because I do not want to waste any of that. That seasoning is a very good seasoning. I definitely recommend it. Um, it's really good for seafood, uh, for fishes, for shrimp. And I'm putting about, I would say, two tablespoons of the Seafood Spectacular in about a teaspoon of my um, other seasoning. Which is called, what is it called? Spice and herbs. I apologize. I keep thinking about my Creole seasoning and that's not what that is. And we're just going to put this on our fish like so. Kind of rub and dab it in there. If you want to add some to your other side, you can. But I'm not going to eat the skin, so I'm not going to worry about that. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and move this out the way so we can go ahead and prepare our veggies. And that's pretty much all the seasoning we're going to do for our salmon. Now, I've already cut my potatoes. I'm going to use red and russet. You can use whichever ones you prefer. I had a few russet left, so I didn't want to waste those. I decided I'd go ahead and use some of those as well or use the rest of those so you can cut them how you want let me see because of the length of time I'm gonna cut mine like so so I'm gonna cut mine about that thick because they're gonna be cooking um, for three hours so I don't want them um, to be too overdone and just keep in mind when I when I give you a time, you know, you can always go back and check your, um, I always recommend going back and checking your food, um, depending on how long this is supposed to be for four hours, go back and check it every hour because you may want yours a different um, uh, tenderness. That's what I'm trying to say. I apologize. You may not want yours as firm as mine or you may not want it as, as tender. But the fish itself uh, takes about three and a half to four hours to cook in your crock pot, just so you'll know that. And depending on the desired tenderness for your potatoes and your veggies, um, that will just depend. But it should be pretty good after the three and a half hours. All right, so we're just gonna cut all the potatoes up like so. You can cut them how you want. Just gonna cut those like that. I'm trying to keep them kind of thick only because, um, like I said, I don't want them to get too done. But I'm gonna come back and check them. We'll come back and check together. So if you wanna try the recipe, you can see you know, how they're cooking. 
This is definitely a recipe I would not recommend for you to put on before you go to work, only because it does not take that long to do fish. I do have some other ones I'm going to share with you that you can put on in the morning before you go to work, which will, um, of course, make some people's lives a little more easier, which that's the purpose of the crock pot. Um, so you can just, you know, set it and, and go and forget it. As they say, set it and forget it. <laughs> All right, so we have our potatoes here. Try to move those out the way so that we can do our asparagus. And again, you can cut your potatoes how you like. You can buy the little small whole potatoes, whichever you want to do. All right, so we got those. I'm going to rinse this. All right. Now, for the asparagus, I'm going to cut them because those that eat asparagus know that the stems are much thicker. So I'm gonna cut mine in half and I'm only gonna add the bottom portions in at first. After an hour and a half, I'm gonna add in my top portion because I just don't want mine, the top portions to be mushy. So I'm just gonna cut them about halfway, especially where the thick part starts. So about there. And I'm gonna save my uh, smaller stems to the side in a little bowl there. Now you can put your asparagus all in there together. Don't think you have to do yours like this if you um, if you don't mind yours getting, because um, you know what's gonna happen is this top part is gonna be really cooked and tender, you know, way more tender than your bottom part. So that's, that's the only reason why I'm doing that. To kind of give it more of an even taste and cook. I don't want the, the mushy top and the firm bottom, which happens a lot which, with asparagus. So now that we have those cut, I'm going to reserve these, like I said, um, in a bowl. I'm going to refrigerate those, and after an hour and a half, we'll come back and check on those. Now, the first thing we want to do is, let me get my crock pot over here. I don't think you're going to be able to see. Um, Let's see if we can do it this way and you all be able to see. All right, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like you can see pretty well. As a matter of fact, I'll just bring all of the stuff this way so you can see. There we go. All right, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add one cup of water, which I've already measured out. My crock pot is on high, just so you know. It's already on. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of my vegetable base. You don't have to add anything in your water or you can use a chicken, um, you know, like a chicken stock or chicken broth. You know, that's totally up to you. Let's get that down in there. Chicken stock, chicken broth, uh, broth, vegetable stock, broth, whichever you prefer. I'm only going to put a cup of water because I only want water down there at the bottom with my potatoes. And I'm just going to whisk that in a little bit. And that's all I'm going to add. This is a very flavorful paste. Those that use it, you already know. It's very similar to chicken bouillon, uh, you know, beef bouillon. It's just like that. It's only in a paste form and it's vegetable instead of chicken or beef. Next, we're going to add our potatoes. I didn't want to pour them because I didn't want to splash, so I'm going to do them like that. All right, now I can pour the rest. All right, so depending on how many people you're feeding, um, this is just for four people, so I'm not going to do too much. All right, now that we got those in, next I'm going to add the stalks from the asparagus. You can kind of add those in how you want. And they'll steam from the uh, 
the bra. And next we're going to add our fish, which is our last thing. Let me pull the fish back up here. I'm going to cut the fish so that when I add them, um, you know, they'll fit inside of the crock pot. I'm going to go ahead and add a little butter. You don't have to add butter. Keep that in mind. This is just what I want to do to my veggies. My butter is a little melted. It's been sitting out. I was waiting to make the video, so it set out a little bit and got a little melted. The butter is totally optional. I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt. Not much, just a little bit. And a little pepper. You can add whatever seasonings and flavorings that you want. All right, now I'm gonna cut the fish so that we can place it on the inside. And the fish was an expensive, um, I think the salmon was about $10 for this large piece, so I thought that was pretty good. And this skin is pretty tough, so let me get my scissors so I can cut it. Okay, now we're going to add the salmon to our crock pot. There's no particular way or order you have to add it. You just want to get it on in there. And it's okay if a little bit is laying on top because we need to try to fit the pieces in here. And I'm going to just lay a piece here. And I'm going to lay that last small piece there. All right, and last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. So I'm doing more of a, a lemon butter. And I'm just gonna, I have a lemon I just cut in half. I'm gonna squeeze that right on top. some of that juice will soak down to your veggies as well. Now, as we cook, as we begin to cook, we'll check, come back and check it in an hour. What we'll do is we'll see how our moisture is going at the bottom. Um, but I do not believe you'll need more than that one cup of water or the one cup of broth or whatever you're going to use um, to moisten your, uh, your fish there. I mean, your, uh, your, you know, your crock pot. You don't need a whole lot because it's going to steam and cook. All right, so we'll come back and check it out in an hour and I'll update you all then. Okay, you all, it's been an hour, so let's check and see how the salmon is doing. So as you can see, it's cooking pretty good and this is only after one hour. Oh, it's getting, getting done there. It's already falling apart, let's see. Oh yeah. It'll be done in less than that four hours, I said. Okay, and the veggies and potatoes are looking good. All right, I'm gonna cover it back up and let it keep going. Okay, it's been two hours and what I did just did was add, um, as you can see, the top of the asparagus there, the cuts that were refrigerated. And I also added a little more butter. And I'm gonna let this cook for another two hours and we're gonna be good to go. Just keep in mind the butter is optional. You do not have to add that. Oh, and I also added a fourth cup of chicken broth. Um, so you don't have to add that either because there's enough juices and liquid in the crock pot. Um, the fish made uh, their, its own liquid as well as we, you know, we added the, um, the cup of water at the beginning, so. Alrighty, we'll be back to check it when it's done. Okay, you all, so it has been um, about three and a half hours. Um, but just from the looks of it, it looks done to me. As you can see, the stems that we added in 
um, later they are definitely done they're not mushy they're still firm if you squeeze in there you may even still have a little crisp out of them so we're just going to go ahead and take some of this out and plate it so you all will be able to see it and again I cooked this for three and a half hours so let me grab some of these out the way so you all can see it on the plate And um, I don't know what substitute you could use for the asparagus. I guess you could use green beans, but you know, of course, you would add those in, you know, pretty much almost at the end. I'm going to say that little piece for my daughter. The fish is so cooked, it's falling apart. Let me see. Let me get something I can grab the fish better with. Okay, I went ahead and removed most of the salmon because it was take it was kind of time consuming. So I did remove the other pieces off. I'm gonna go ahead and plate that piece. And I also removed the other smaller uh, asparagus that I could. As you can see, they are done. Let me taste one of those. Mm. Are good. Now I'm going to grab a few potatoes. You can see our potatoes down here. And then also the other stems, the larger stems that, um, you know, we can eat those now because they're much softer. And the potatoes look perfect. I'm going to stick a toothpick in them and see just how good they are. Get a few more. All right, so I have everything here. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to let me go ahead and move the crock pot out the way so you all can see. All right, I'm going to take my lemon. And put some over my salmon there. Got a little seed. I didn't even know I had more seeds in that lemon. And then I have a little bit of my fresh parsley. I'm just going to sprinkle some of that on there. And a little bit on the potatoes. And that's pretty much it. So this actually took three and a half hours. It will not take that long. You can actually, um, I had to leave and go get my daughter from practice. That would have been done actually. I would give it a, a minimum of three hours. If you want to go, go a little more, you can. It won't hurt. Um, but just know, you know, your veggies and, and things like that will get, you know, more cooked. I'm just going to put a little bit of that butter on there that butter sauce so now that's pretty much it so uh, three hours is pretty good to get this whole meal done I hope you all enjoyed it we're gonna go ahead and eat and sure you can see it all and you know you can always scoop some of that juice out of there and add it on because it's you know it's that butter and a little bit of that lemon um, what other sauces that we put in there the seasoning was just the seafood spectacular which is really good on the salmon um, and there you have it. You have your meal all in one pot. All right, you all. I will see you all again. Um, next, we're going to do our the chicken and rice stuffed. Uh, I'm sorry, the chicken and rice cabbage rolls. That's what I meant to say. So we'll be making those next. So I'll see you all then, and you have a blessed night.